Welcome. Happy New Year. I know it's already February and uh, it's already a month in, but um, as Ryan was saying, we're super excited to have you um, and and not only as a uh, as a corporate vendor, but really as a friend and a mentor um, to both of us, meaning I don't know how many questions we always ask you even offline and say, hey, Paul, what do you think about this? What are you seeing about this? What happens when do you know, when you lost all your money, no, you didn't lose all your money in 2007, but you know, <laughs> then, you know, I actually, you know, what's funny. Like I know there's some people that have been in real estate for some time. Um, I, and there was a, a conversation I specifically remember was, uh, you know, I, Ryan and I got wiped out, you know, with bankruptcy and you mentioned, I mean, I'm just gonna put you on a spot. So Go ahead. how much money, how much money did you lose in 2007 or eight? Roughly, would you say? Roughly? Roughly. Or do you know exactly? <laughs> no, I, I don't want to know exactly. $10 million. $10 million. Okay. Yes. So, I, I, and the other thing that you told me, which, yeah, what's that? Yeah, not, not 10 million pesos, $10 million. Yeah, 10 million real dollars. Yeah. And, and, I was feeling bad. I was like, oh, I lost all of my money and this happened. And what you told me, I don't know if you remember you saying this, but you said, if you didn't lose any money at that time, you weren't investing. You weren't. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and, and, and the amazing thing is, if you didn't invest, you would never had the opportunity to lose that much money. True. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And that's the, that's the key, because I did not win the lottery. <clears throat> <laughs> Lost any then, money. You've never been a real investor, so. Yeah. All right, say that again, please. You've never lost money, then you've never been a real investor. Yeah, exactly, and uh, exactly. And if you've never made a bad loan, you're not lending enough money. <laughs> and, and you're not. You're being too conservative. I like. That. Hey, you know what? I mean, do I have to borrow the money from you, or can, or are you just giving away money? That's my first question. Brian, uh, sign us up. You know. If you're okay with us not paying you back or paperwork, we're good. Uh, no. <laughs> the, the second yeah. end of that question, right? So, you know, do you want to talk about how well you did after the crash? Also, I mean. Yeah, after the crash. You know what? After the crash, there were a lot of guys that ran away and quit. And uh, after the crash, there was probably more money to be made. There was more money to be made on the investing side than ever um, because the houses really didn't lose their intrinsic value. The guys that bought after the crash made more money than anybody else. The guys who quit, got scared and went home, they just watched everybody else make money. And, uh, Wait, actually, since we're kind of, I know, I know Ryan and I know you pretty well. How about to our audience? Do you want to give them a little bit of background of how long you've been in real estate, how you got into lending, or, you know. Then, then, then I'm going to have to tell everybody I dye my hair. It's really gray. And uh, <laughs> when people talk about the crash, I think they're talking about the one in the 80s. And uh, <laughs> that, that, that's the first crash I experienced when interest rates went up to 16%. So uh, that gives you an idea how long I've been doing it. Um, and there's a lot of new people here. I bought my first house on credit cards and a loan from household finance, which doesn't even exist anymore. And, uh, and I didn't know anything about it. I found out that the paneling on the wall was really the wall. And, uh, when I took it off, there was nothing behind it. Um, but. I broke even on the house. And, uh, and so that's how long I guess I've been doing this since 1980. I bought my first house in 1982. I was two years old. <laughs> um, so for our younger, our younger viewers, that's, that's pre-internet, guys. Yes, oh, it's pre-internet. It. I used to go down to the courthouse and copy the foreclosures off the public record paper that they would hang the paper on the wall of the public record. And we would go down and we would copy it off the wall. And they still had auctions on the courthouse in the lobby of the courthouse. Um, 
and here's what I know about doing this business that long. The guys that continue, there's, as I say, at your meetings, you have 300 people in the audience and you have maybe 30 or 40 of them that actually did a deal. And those people are making money. The people that are watching, not doing deals for whatever reason, are, are not making any money. Um, you can't be afraid of making a mistake or you'll absolutely do nothing. Um, so I guess I started lending money. I really started lending money in 2004. Uh, I had uh, a 25% interest in an apartment building. I tried to sell it in January to my partners, my interest for a quarter of a million dollars. They wouldn't buy it. In October of 2004, I got $4.6 million for my 25% interest. And uh, it just, you know, I don't know if I was stupid for trying to sell it earlier or if they were stupid for not buying it. Um, but I know this, that if they're not in the game, there's a hundred people here. Um, take a poll, how many of them have actually bought a piece of property? And, uh, so what we'll do is actually, go ahead and put it in the chat because I, I pre listed some of these poll questions in there. So it'll take me a minute. All right. Go ahead and put it in the chat if you've actually bought a piece of property. Uh, Yvonne, yes. Geraldine, yes. Tanya, yes. Karen, yes. Melanie. And to give you a good idea, Paul, just so so you know that, it looks like one fourth of our group has actually right. done a hard loan. Oh, really? So, yeah, so there's a good, actually it's a little bit more than 25% of you guys have actually done hard money loans. So uh, more than 60% of you guys have not uh, used a hard money loan. Um, there's those small little minorities thinking that it's they're too worried about rates and points. And then uh, these are my honest people, Paul. They said, there's about 10% of you guys that are intimidated in finding the correct loan. So- well, Every loan is different. Here's what, what I tell somebody that's doing a loan. Money is a commodity, but when you're, you're doing a fix and flip, there's three key parts to the loan. There's the interest rate, there's the LTV, and there's uh, the fees, the junk fees, the, the points and all that. The, and they're all variable. Any lender that says these are fixed in stone doesn't know what he's doing. Um, the lender has to make money. If it's going to be a quick short-term flip, the borrower doesn't care what the interest rate is doesn't matter if it's nine or if it's 15%, it's only gonna be for a few couple of months. What he cares about is the upfront cost, um, how many points are involved. If he has no money, he doesn't care what the interest rate or the points are, he cares how big a loan he can get. He cares for, about what his LTV is. And, uh, the guys that have a record of doing it, maybe they've done three or four loans, they're lucky because they can get a high LTV, a low interest rate, and very little junk fees up front. And, uh, so, but it's like a three-legged stool and they're all, there's no reason to be intimidated um, because I'll sit down and explain all the parts of the loan to you. It's, it's mathematical. Absolutely. So let, let's kind of talk about, you know, and guys, if you have questions, just put them in the q and I'll make sure I, uh, I asked Paul, we asked Paul today, you know, we're, if you guys have been following our webinars lately, we're actually asking our partners not to do too much PowerPoint. And the reason is because we want it to be super interactive, right? Um, to actually ask the questions. I, I always got a ton of questions for Paul, even though my background is financing. Uh, the quick end on a side note, I know most of you guys have been following us uh, for some time, uh, if you're new. Ryan and I are the owners of the Miami-Dade REIT and the Broward Real Estate Investors Association. Uh, we're investors and we're cash buyers too. So keep an eye on the chat. If you're, uh, uh, we have a partnership program too. So if, if you can't sell a property, give us a call. Uh, we'll work with you. Either we'll buy it or we'll send in our 10,000 plus cash buyers list. Um, so let's talk about one of the things that I always get is, you know, especially if you've been coming to meetings, you're looking online. And, and the question I always get, aren't all hard monies uh, or hard money people or lenders the same? Like what's, what's the benefit 
of working with someone that you know that actually lands versus some, you know versus one of the bigger companies out there. Okay. You're asking me that question. Yeah, I'm asking you. Um, because like, if I know you, you yeah, I, to me it's a personal thing. I, with the exception of the last year, I personally knew everybody I did a loan with, um, and it makes a big difference when. You have an issue with the deal. Um, many times you get into a deal, it's not going as expected. Um, my idea is then I come in and we figure out a solution. I have never ever filed a foreclosure on a borrower. And I have wow. probably done, wow. I would say I've been involved in a thousand loans. I have never filed a foreclosure. I've always managed to work it out somehow, whether it's finding another investor to buy it, whether it's uh, Dean Lou, I've never ever had to file a foreclosure. Um, and that's an advantage because I look at it like we both have to win or if at least nobody has to lose. And, uh, right. and yeah, if somebody loses, they're out of the game, they're out of the industry and it's no good. But, uh, I, I think the other advantage is since you're local and you know, well, Paul didn't really talk about, I mean, he talked a little bit about it that he's been investing He's done, I don't know how many flips and rehabs himself. So he has the experience as number one versus, um, again, I'm not knocking. If there's any other hard money lenders listening in, <laughs> I'm not knocking <laughs> on you guys. Say hello to <laughs> them. I'm, I'm going to get a phone call right afterward. But, you know, a lot of times they're just reps, right, for some of the bigger companies out there. And they're, you know, if you don't fit in the category, it's a no-go. So that, that's number one. So I think working with someone local, uh, I know you were like the Wilson Manor King. Of, I've done, you know, done so many flips there. Oh, so yeah. knowing, knowing the local market makes a big difference uh, on that portion versus, you know, if, if I was going to do it and I was new, let's say I'm new and I'm picking an area here in South Florida, I could at least ask you and say, what do you think about this price? What about these repairs? So one of the questions I, I am getting right now is, now they're all starting to <laughs> uh, come in. So this is from Anonymous. And we'll kind of run into these. And we'll, you know, I'll try to get to as many of your questions as possible, too. So, you know, bear with us. Um, so one of the things that uh, uh, Anonymous, my favorite person, Anonymous, because they don't want to type their name, they say, I know the hard money lender has to make money, but do they have to charge a high interest rate? Can you explain the reason for the high rates when the market rate is so low? The risk is much greater. Um, what we do is, is much greater on a risk. It's also, and, and here you're worried about the interest rate. That's one leg of a three-legged stool. What I typically do on a loan is I sit down and I say, what's your exit strategy? What do you need on this loan? Because every loan, they need different things. Um, the greater the risk, the shorter the period of time, the higher the interest rate. Um, if I do an interest, if I do a loan that's only going to be two months, you know, I have to, I have to make money somewhere. We all have to make money somewhere. And uh, so there's three legs on the stool. I sit down and say, which one is most profitable for you? And I can live with the return on it. And uh, don't, don't pay attention to the interest rate exclusively. And, uh, right. and don't be afraid of the interest rate because if you let an interest rate scare you off because you might pay $4,000 in interest so you don't take the deal that you would have made $30,000 on the house. You know, that, that doesn't make sense. And uh, as Absolutely. I always say, pay attention to how much you're gonna make, not how much somebody else is gonna make. Absolutely. And, and so there's a couple of things on that too, is that, you know, uh, I'm not as old as Paul, close to it, I feel like it sometimes. <laughs> depending on uh, how I feel. Um, yeah. But, you know, like you want to talk about what interest rates were like, you know, back like a normal mortgage in the 90s. Or, you know, I was doing loans in 2000. I remember it was like eight and a half or nine percent. In the a, in 83, it was 16 percent. Yeah. And, and uh, they were still making money. Yeah. That's and that point. was not a hard money loan. And, you know, you couldn't get a loan when Jimmy Carter had his uh, crash. You know, the prime rate was, I think, 16% or 14%. That was a conventional bank financing. So, uh, 
don't pay attention to the interest rate. Pay attention to the total cost of the loan and pay attention to how much money you're going to make by taking the loan. Yep. Uh, yep. And, and so the other funny part of that is too, is like, you know, Brian and I, you know, we rehab and people are always worried about whether it's the points or interest rate, which like exactly what Paul's saying, you can't worry about that. But when they're selling the house, I kind of crack up. They're giving away a credit for 5,000. Exactly. 4, <laughs> Re, you know, like on that end of it, you're fine. Or, or you're doing the rehab and, you know, your, your workers aren't working and it's costing you, you know, daily interest. And then you're saving, you're trying to save 50 bucks on a faucet. Yep. Right. So like, it, it doesn't make any sense. I, I, like sometimes you're worried about the wrong things is what I tell people. Yes, correct. Uh, I'll finance for, the renovation. I'll get the renovation financed. And so now because you don't have a cash flow problem on the refinance, on the renovation, you get the job done in two or three months rather than six months and you save all that interest. So there's a lot of variables in a loan. And, uh, anybody that's got a cookie cutter said, this is my cost, this is my terms, really isn't helping you. They're really not designing the loan. They're designing the loan for them, not for you. Absolutely. And, and so like we do have some newbies on there. So can we just kind of, We'll backtrack, like how a hard money loan or like the big, you know, the big questions can it be owner occupied or, you know, they want to house hack or do all these other things out there. Do you want to kind of talk about the basics of a hard money loan? Like, you know, can I buy it in a trust? Can I buy it in a corporation or? The basic thing I look at is, am I going to get my money back? <laughs> now, if you're brand new with no experience, I want to see, okay, when you buy this house, what are you going to do with it? How are you going to renovate it? Uh, what are you going to sell it for? And if you're brand new, I'm going to walk you through. I've gone out on houses and say, you know, maybe we should do this to the kitchen um, because I've done it hundreds, maybe a thousand deals yeah. where I've been a renovator. If you're brand new, I love it because I, I've been doing this so long. What I get my kick out of is watching someone be successful. And, right. uh, and I still love to go out on a job site and I know, stick I know, my nose in. I, I know to get Paul out on a job site, you better buy him lunch, though. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you better feed him. Or what's even funnier is I'll say, I'll meet you on the job site. I'll bring chicken. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I'll bring the lunch. Um, yeah. So, so I used to. But, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. No, what I was going to say, some of the basics with hard money. Uh, first of all, it, it, it cannot, right? You don't do owner occupied loans. Correct. Long term, right? Correct. Do you want to talk about your standard, your standard fix and flip? How long is the term? And we'll talk about the, the refi and all the other stuff too in a second, but all right. what do you generally, and, and loan right, the value? Term. Yeah. I, so. I, the term I write is for 12 months, but at six months, I want to see progress. And, uh, and if, you're, if you don't have any progress, I'm going to walk out and I'm going to say, okay, what's the solution? What's holding it up? Um, and I want to know because you can't hold the, if you're holding the note for a year, it's costing you too much money. Um, so one of the things I do is if you're running into a problem, I'll go out on the job site. I'll look at your problem and I'll say, okay, how do we solve this problem? Um, and it, uh, as I always say, and I'm going to mention my age, when you get to be my age and doing it as long as I have, I do it because I like the income. But equally, I love being involved in it. I like going out and seeing a job. I, I used to call this my art when I would renovate a house. Um, so if you're a newbie, I'm like a great lender because I'll walk you through stuff. I... Uh, Will you pick up a hammer? Yes, I've been known to pick up a hammer. Um, I, <laughs> oh, yes. Hand it to me. You'll, you'll pick up the hammer and hand it to me, right? Here you go, Nish. No, uh, <laughs> quite the cut. No, I, you know what? I, I can't paint well, but um, yeah, I I love it. I, I'll tell you a story. I got involved. I bought a house. I fixed it up. I loved it. I bought more houses. I got involved. I fixed them up. I loved them. I got to the point where I was buying a lot of houses I had people fixing them up. I was buying apartment complexes and I was flipping them without ever seeing them. And I missed 
being on the job site. I, uh, to turn it into perspective, I bought a bunch of houses in Sebring sight unseen a couple years ago. I saw one of them and I liked it. And I told uh, my contractor, I'm going to fix this one up myself. Let me tell you this. My skills aren't as good as they were 40 years ago. <laughs> um, and then I spent a year and a half fixing up a house that he would have done in 30 days. But I loved it. And so when a borrower invites me out to see his house that he's working on, man, that's my favorite kind of borrower because I, I can look at it. And, uh, and, and that's one of the huge advantages of dealing with a local guy instead of the guy in California that's looking at the entire thing as a mathematical equation. And, uh, you know, I like it and, and I like it. And, and I have the experience to help the new guy. I have the experience to understand the, the guy that's done a hundred or that's done 10 of them a year um, to work with him and as to how he needs. It's, it's something that uh, I like doing it. I try to retire, but I don't know how to knit. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah. So, so I mean, let, let's go back to that. So can they buy it in their own name? We're going to kind of go to some little basics of hard money. No, so, no. Right, uh, so I can't with extremely style. rare exception. Got it. And so the rare exception is I've got I've done about twenty deals with you, and have a good okay. reason. But yeah. but generally speaking, you 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 like to see the structure what LLC? You'll do land trust. The you ideal that... thing is LLC land trust. Let me tell you the reason a hard money lender doesn't particularly like a land trust. The purpose of a land trust is to hide ownership. And that's the purpose, is to keep the ownership secret. And as a hard money lender, I don't want you to keep a secret. I, uh, I wanna know who I'm lending it to. I don't know, you can transfer the interest in a land trust uh, very easily. Um, so I prefer LLCs. I do land trusts, but land trusts entail some extra legal work, and some extra due diligence on my part. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, but I do do them. And, and, what, and what about loan to value, right? So we always get that. So let's say I'm new. Let's, let's, let's do one scenario where you're new, right? So I'm new to real estate. Okay. I think I know how to rehab. I got a okay. little bit of money. I think I'm going to buy this deal. What would the loan to value, right? So how much money in, in layman terms what I need to put up for the purchase. Let's we'll start with that. Hundred thousand okay. dollars. Let's start. Hundred thousand dollar purchase. Yeah. Make up some numbers. How much rehab? Uh, let's do thirty thousand. It's an easy rehab. What's it worth it's after it's done? Um, we're going to use one eighty five. Uh, okay, so, so the numbers are. we here. Let's make it easier. One one hundred fifteen rehab. After repair value, maybe two, 225. Yeah, here, you know, here's here's what I, I, I use 100 purchase, 15 rehab, 200 okay. in value. Oh, Perfect. because the math is easy. Yeah. Typically, I lend 80% of the purchase. In this particular case, that would be $80,000. I would lend 100% of the rehab. In this case, that would be $50,000. I would lend a maximum of 65% of the ARV. In this case, that'd be $130,000. Miraculously, the 80,000 purchase and the 50,000 rehab add up to $130,000. <laughs> it, it's, it's never happened in real life, but right. those are the values I look at. I look at uh, the purchase price and the ARV. Now, if you're brand new, I wanna see how you're gonna do the rehab. Um, if, if you're jobbing it out to an experienced contractor, that gives me a little more security, um, as long as the budget is there. I'm gonna look at your budget if I'm doing it. I'm gonna, if you're new, I'm gonna look at it closer. I'm gonna look at your credit. Um, I'm gonna see if, if you've got a 580 credit score, I'm gonna you know, call your mother, see if she'll co-sign for you. But uh, if you've been paying your bills, if you have a history of paying your bills, that, mm -hmm. uh, that's advantageous. Um, it's not a credit-based loan, but the credit does have an influence on it. What about assets? Like on that same kind of deal, like besides the down payment, 
that that we're agreeing on. Where your personal assets are? No, I don't. Uh, I don't worry about your personal assets. No, okay. not on the first deal. Um, I want to see how you're going to pay the loan back. And uh, but you know, a newbie. I love a new guy <clears throat> that walks out of your training program and he finds a deal, and he's got. You guys train probably better than any other real estate thing. So he's walking out with, uh, with the knowledge and the exuberance and quite possibly no money. That's okay. Um, because money is the easiest part. Um, the knowledge and the willingness to, uh, to do it and, you know, the, the deal that's been analyzed, um, that's the important part. Absolutely. And then, so let's say we closed on the deal, right? And, and right. how many points do we usually get? You want to define what a point is too? So I, again- a point is 1% of, of the loan. Correct. Um, there's no uh, there's no definite yeah. amount on how many points. It um, depends, it depends how, uh, what you're having for lunch, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it, uh, it depends on what percentage you're taking on the loan. It depends on- you know, the interest rate, it, uh, there's very, that's why I say there's no fixed parameters. Right. Um, what, what about, what about types of properties? Let's, let's kind of even go into there. The best um, type you, of property is a condos. single family three, two. Single family, but do you do high rise condos? Yes, I do condos. Um, okay. That, uh, condos are different though. I'll do a less LTV because now I have to look at the condo docs and what's permitted. I always need to know your exit strategy on the loan. Um, mm -hmm. And so in a condo, you gotta have uh, an exit strategy. If it's 55 and over condo, your market to sell it is decreased. Um, if there's no rental restrictions in a condo, that's better. But if there's rental restrictions, you can't sell it to an investor. So I do condos, but I have to look at each one individually. Um, and then you'll do up to four units, or are you doing um, four? When I say four units, I'm talking about four plexes, or are you doing multifamily bigger? Well, I got, into, I got into Sebring because a guy had a 24 unit building that he wanted uh, to borrow on. Mm -hmm. And I had never been to Sebring, I had never done any business in Sebring. Um, he wanted to borrow on a 24 unit building. So I ended up uh, putting the money up on the 24 unit building. And uh, so what am I, yeah, there's no. Uh, yeah, it's gotta I, make I, sense. So, I mean, it's, I know gotta make, so many it's gotta make economic sense. Yeah, uh, I know there's a lot of factors that go on um, when you're looking at loan. That's, and this is what like today's thing is because if you were like me when I first started, I always thought it was like a cookie cutter and with some of the bigger companies it is. Right. It, oh, you correct. This. You got to check this mark and check that. So, you know, the benefits of working with a local lender that knows the market that's actually been a rehabber, uh, you know, it, even if your price was no joke, like, you know, 2% higher or one point. Correct. I'd rather have the local guy because if, if, if in general, like I get stuck, I might not make any money in a deal. Like you said, you might find another investor to take it over versus, you know, having a foreclosure on your record. I obviously, um, yep. it, it makes a big difference. Um, before we get in, I have a ton of questions. I'm going to kind of roll through some of these questions too. So the first question is what areas will you loan in? Is it just Florida or no. are you lending in? It depends. Um, uh, I have relationships with banks out of New York that'll lend in anywhere. So it depends. Uh, I'll lend and if you have a deal now that you're working on, that you're selling it to a guy, I'm going to I put together that he's got two houses in Alabama that I will lend him money on. And then I will lend him money on the house that he's buying from you. Oh, and there you go. He will use that money to make a down payment on the other one. So we're, I, and another thing is I can put together a deal that uh, is way outside the box. Um, yeah. And, and just like go into that, that what he's saying is, you know, for, for some of the new people, uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, basically like a blanket mortgage where it's multiple properties that they're using as collateral, right? So Paul and lenders in general, they need collateral, right? And, yes. And I'm not talking about a car, I'm talking about 
real estate collateral. Um, so I think that's always important. Uh, actually, we might as well kind of talk about that a little bit too, is land. I know the new thing, I don't want to call it new, but I've seen a ton in the last 12 months because mm -hmm. prices sometimes are going through the roof, build to rent. So what is, first of all, you want to explain what build to rent is mm -hmm. and how does it work on the lending portion? Uh, these six unit apartment buildings I'm doing are build to rent. Uh, I'm lending, I'm putting together the deal where from the ground up construction, it, uh, we're lending, and then he's got a takeout loan from the bank at 2.8%, I think, uh, once he's finished. Uh, that's a bill to rent. Um, but now he can go in with a full dock loan from the bank. Other mm -hmm. bill to rents I'm doing are, are, well, on the ground up, that basically I do bill to rent and bill to sale. Uh, Built to rent, you're rarely doing a single family. What I mm -hmm. do on uh, a number of deals, what I, if a guy's young, what I try to do is convince him to do a fix and flip and then rent it and then convert it to a long-term loan and keep it as uh, an income producing property. Um, right. so, so, so many times I've seen them, they do a fix and flip, they make $40,000, they go out, they buy a new car, and, uh, and they go on vacation and in three months, the $40,000 is gone. They're starting all over. Yeah. What they can do is they can refinance that thing, hold the property for rent and get probably 90, 95% of their money back out of it. And so now they have both the capital to go and buy another fix and flip. And they have a wealth building equity with rental income for the next 20 years. And if they pick up, one or two of those a year, you know what? When they get to be my age, they're living in Monaco. <laughs> Monaco. Uh, yeah, Monaco. Yeah, not, not, not Monaco. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Not like Monaco, New Jersey. No, I don't know yeah, not like mean. Monaco, New Jersey. No. It, uh, if there is you know, one, it's, <laughs> it's, I always say real estate, you can get rich quick in it, but there's a gamble in that. But if you do it intelligently, you can positively get rich slowly and uh and i i have customers that are refinancing properties they have portfolios of 30 and 40 properties and uh that they bought and they fixed and they rented out and now they're refinancing them and they have you can't figure out their rent their re rate of return because they have cash taken out of it they have no money left in the property and they're still making profit they're still making positive cash flow it, uh, yeah. So, I mean, like to recap on that. So what they're doing is, um, even on this or they're buying or building, right. They're uh, right. repairing. Right. Uh, then they're going to refinance it and then rent it. Right. And basically you're putting your, all your money in and that's how you build long-term wealth. Yes. So pick, really pick the ones that, you know, it makes sense. You want to make sure. And, and what Paul's really talking about is you're going to start with a hard money loan at whatever percentage. Let's say twelve percent on the refinance, which I know they could also do with you, right? You have lenders Correct. that will yep. refinance them out, and and usually it should be pretty easy if you're doing this right because it's very easy value on that portion, and then it moves into what kind of rate, roughly, would you say? If they, I know, it's, I'm doing it now on no okay. doc, low doc loans in the fours. Okay. I just so, did a portfolio of four point four one. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna help explain. So you know, my background is financing too, so it's easy for you know Paul and I to nerd out on language. Right. Right? So like low doc, you want to tell them what low doc is? Like low doc wanna, is yeah, low doc is boat? give me three months bank statements. There you go, three months yeah. bank statements. So if you're self-employed, let's talk about this too because uh, if you have a good accountant you're gonna to try to lower your taxes constantly. If you lower your taxes, you're not showing enough income for traditional banks. So they don't like it. So you got two choices, either to show more income, pay more taxes, or the alternative, these lenders know that you're an investor, it's a low doc loan. So let's say instead of 3%, right? I'm gonna use that for an investment right. property, cash out three, three and a quarter. Yeah, 3% um, is cheap on an investment property. Right, and, and now you're talking about 4%. So right. 
So if yes. you really look at the dollar amount, right? And, and don't worry about the percentages. I always get the people always drive me nuts. I'm like, well, it, the difference between three and 4%, right? On payments or three and a half on 200,000, it's not much a year versus paying all those extra taxes um, throughout the year. So that's correct. What I, and, and, and it's a lot easier. Like really like at this point, you want to get the deal. When you start doing this, you want, you're going to want to build velocity. And when you're building velocity, time's going to be really important. And, and the thing is not to, you know, stress out about those minor things, whether it's three, you know, if you would have said, you know, five years ago, 4% on a conventional, you'd been ecstatic, right? And now, you know, Paul's talking about doing that on a low doc investment property that you rehab. Right. Let, let me let me use let me and let me interrupt for a second. Let me use that two hundred thousand dollar ARV house as an example. Mm -hmm. You bought it for a hundred, I loaned you eighty on the purchase. You renovated it for fifty, I loaned you fifty on the renovation. So now you owe one hundred and thirty thousand. It's worth two hundred thousand. You can go ahead and take a loan out on that house for one hundred and fifty thousand. You've gotten all your money back. And you still own a house with 50000 in equity that's generating a positive cash flow. You have no money invested. You try and figure out the ROI and the rate of return on that, and then your calculator won't do it. It'll just print out X's and Z's. E's. Actually, it'll print out an E infinite. with a bunch of zeros after it. Yeah, it's infinite. Yep. Because it's basically infinite because you have no money in it. You have no and money that's in it. Not, and that's the key on, on doing this. Um, I'm going to roll through some questions. Uh, um, also, let's see. So Jose's asking for the local area is using the formula, let's see, percentage of ARV minus repairs still standard. And if, if so, what percentage of ARV is the local market for Broward? So if they're going to analyze a property pretty quick. Right. You're going to do the, after, so ARV after repair value. So right. for easy numbers, let's just stick to the 100,000 ARV. Is there a percentage that you're using? You know, I know the industry average, we do a quick one where it's 75% because we want to make a 25% profit, but is there something that- He's you asking how much to pay for the house? No, what, what percentage of the ARV would you, would you use? What percent of the, I would use 65% of the ARV. Now the loan would be, let's see, I haven't looked at it that way. Minus the renovation, mm -hmm. so on, uh, because I would put that in escrow, and yeah. so it would be, yeah, yeah no, 65%. I would, yeah, that, you're right, like that, that makes sense on the loan part of it, right? So, yes, it, ideally, you're putting 10% of your own money in on the acquisition, is what we're trying to tell you. If you have some, well, no, I need you to have 20, I need you to have skin in the game, I need 20% of your own money in on the purchase. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, my bad. I know. I know. For Ryan and I, you gave us different numbers. My bad. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. But it. Uh, <laughs> but if I'm not mistaken, you said the average guy and uh, yeah, 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 or the newbie. Yeah. So twenty percent. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you guys fall under that. And here's another thing, that as you develop a, a record and a history, all the numbers go out the window. Um, yeah. I've loaned a hundred percent on deals. Um, yeah, yeah, because yeah. I know that the equity is there, the experience is there. I've loaned a hundred percent on deals. Uh, yeah, and I, I mean, why, why don't you give an example of someone that started with you, right? Like they right. did their first. Let's, let's let's kind of talk about like, listen, I'm a newbie. Maybe it was five years ago, four years ago, and like maybe an example of someone you've seen them grow and where they're at. I don't know, something like that. They started, do you have anyone in mind that you could think of, uh, you don't have to say their names, but just in general, they did their first, they're new to real estate. They learned to do, they borrowed from you. Right. And where are they? Where they are now? Yeah. I have a guy, he borrowed from me four years ago. Okay. He right now has, I believe eight loans open. Wow. And uh, yes, and it, uh, and so, so let me ask you this, the second part of that, right? You started with 20%. I'm just going to use your numbers. They did 20% down in the beginning, right? And then right. they did, um, you were doing up to 100% on 
of repairs or 90% right. whatever you're doing. And where are they, are you still making them do 20% down or does he have enough track record? It depends. Uh, uh, and okay. quite honestly, what I, what I say to him is, listen, sometimes I'll eat the dog, sometimes you eat the dog. And uh, <laughs> so it depends on the deal and what he needs. Um, sometimes yeah. he comes to me and says, you know what, here's what I need. And uh, here's the deal. It's a great deal. I need 100%. And uh, I look at the equity and I say, here's another number that I keep in my mind. If I'm willing to buy that house for 10% more than the loan, I'll lend on it. And, it. Uh, and so in that case, the 80, the 90, the 70% LTV goes out the window. Um, because remember, the thing I always have to fall back on is if you don't pay me, what do I do with that property? Yeah. What, what's uh, your, yeah, you got to figure out your exit strategy. You're in the same boat as they are. My exit Finding. strategy? I get 10 yeah. people to call me every day. <laughs> I yeah. know what yours, uh, I'm just saying yeah. in general, that, you know. Oh, when, yeah, when yeah I want to know what theirs is. Yeah, you want to know theirs, and then you have to have your own exit strategy if anything goes wrong. Correct, correct. Yeah. And it's uh, and. And so I'm going to roll through. I mean, wow, there, you guys are asking some really good questions. Um, I did put a poll up there also about, you know, about half of you guys are new to the business. Um, there's about 22% of them actually are using their own cash or private money for deals right now. So Why? They get, uh, no, they get no leverage. Well, private money is different. That's a loan. But their own money, they get no leverage. Absolutely. So. As I say, they use their own money. They buy a house, they fix it, and they sell it and they make $40,000 or $50,000. If they leverage that, if they use me, they can buy two or three houses. Maybe they lose four or $5,000 in interest to me on each house. But instead of making 50,000 one, they do three houses that they make 40,000 each on. And so their bottom line is they made 120,000 instead of 50,000. Yeah. Uh, leverage is a beautiful thing. And the thing is, like, if you really want to run this as a business and, and accumulate wealth, it's hard to do one deal at a time. I mean, I've it's done impossible. It. It's it's not. Yeah, you're going to be. No, nowhere. you have a job if you do that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so Aisha is asking, how do you find hard money lenders and can they be relatives? So I'll answer the first part. Paul is a hard money lender. So that's pretty easy. Uh, we do have other lenders if you go to Bria.com. Uh, but I would advise Paul, one of the things that we didn't even really talk about. So if you've been following our, our webinars, one of the things I, I ask our vendors to do is to give something away to our, our audience. And so I kind of uh, pushed Paul's arm and he's <laughs> actually doing uh, a $900 lender credit. So meaning $300 lender credit on each of your first three deals with him. So they do have to close. Uh, initially, he wanted to do one. I wanted five. We agreed at the middle. So it's hard. It's always hard to uh, work with a hard money lender that knows what he's doing, meaning to negotiate. So <laughs> basically, your first three loans that you do with Paul, nine hundred bucks. So three hundred dollars. And, here, and I'll, I'll take it a step further. You don't uh -oh. even have to mention that until after we've agreed on the terms. Okay. So, that, so this way, you don't think in the back of my mind that I'm building that. $300 in somewhere. We'll agree on the terms. And then okay. after, then you say, uh, but I get a $300 credit. And I say, okay, fine. Um, otherwise, you might walk away saying, well, he added that 300 here or there or whatever. Right. No, it's a true 300. There you go. See, I was even thinking, like, I didn't even think of that. And okay, fair enough. And then the second part of Aisha's questions, can they be relatives? I would just say, I'm just going to give you my story, one of my first deals back in the 2007, eight crash, I borrowed money from my parents for my first two deals. Uh, not first, but a couple of deals and then it went south. It's a horrible feeling. So um, they're not as relatives. There's gonna be, you don't wanna be at Thanksgiving saying, hey, how come you're not working on my house that I lent on or how's this going? Or, you know, the input. And I don't know if you wanna add something about, you know, working not, with- Yeah, here, I'll friends. give you my son's phone number <laughs> who I loaned him money to buy houses when he went through college. And uh, and you can ask him, what's the easiest way to borrow money? <laughs> and he Absolutely. might tell you, you know, household finance or, or the loan shark. <laughs> and, uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it comes with strings when it's family sometimes. That's all. I'm not yeah, saying not only that, it comes with questions that are, uh, that are always there. You know, every time he, he calls, hey, Dad, I love you. I said, oh, good, I know you love me. How's the house coming along? And, uh, you know, it, it's, yeah. It, uh, can you borrow from, and, and I also charge him interest. Here's what's funny. I loan my son money and uh, I charge him full, full fees, full everything. But yeah. I did give him 100%. And one of my friendly competitors offered to give him less money, a better deal. And I said, don't you give him a better deal. I want him to learn the value of time and, and, and money. And he'll do that by getting the job done quick. Besides, I need the income and uh, he's an easy customer. Absolutely. So, yeah. And I know I'm getting some questions and we'll put them in the chat. Paul's information, I'll, I'll have uh, uh, Alexa, our manager, put his information, his phone number and his email. So uh, you'll have his information too. So I'm gonna a full, Bunch of questions on that. Um, Sharon's asking, do you refinance on a property I paid cash for? Yes. So you could do that regular refinances. Um, yeah, what you want to do on that is you want to, yes, I'll refinance on what's called a non-QM property, which this way you don't have to go through all the tax rules and that. And uh, your interest rate will run in the fours instead of in the twelves. And there'll be a cash out. But yes, Absolutely. I do a lot of that right now. Perfect. And then Debbie, we've kind of already answered this. Answer this. Uh, does Paul offer loans that include the price to repair the property? He does. So that that we've already kind of touched on. Um, how should a newbie contact a hard money lender? Are there pre-qualifications? So let's, and that's a good question actually, Natalia, is that um, should they get pre-qualified first or should they find a deal first with you? How about that? Uh, you, you, either one you know what if they find a good deal you should bring it to find, us first <laughs> yeah yeah if they find a good deal even if they can't qualify they, they owe their mother or they owe they they got no credit cards they're horrible but they got a good deal i can sell the deal for them i yeah. uh you know i can get a loan if it's a really good deal I'll finance a dead guy. And, uh, but <laughs> yeah, because remember my, my collateral is a property. Um, right. So, but, and I also say this, if I won't finance you, don't buy it. And uh, if true. I won't finance you, walk away from the deal because oftentimes you fall in love with a property. And, uh, and I look at the property totally different. Um, Although I once bought a property because I wanted the tree that was in the front yard. And, uh, and so I bought the house. I dug up the tree. I moved it to my house. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. That sounds well, like rich people's problem. I, I want to get there that I buy a house just because of the tree. Well, I would, you, I'm you too know, Indian. I, I would have offered was, the guy. I would have knocked on the door and tried to buy the tree from him instead of the house. But well, I I, uh, the house was for sale. It had an eight foot Ming tree. And uh, I, I brought it home, I put it in my living room. Um, and uh, yeah, no, it, I, it sounds like, a, yeah, you know what? It sounds like a guy that <laughs> had, had too much money, didn't know what to do with it. Um, but but I, did make, I did make money on the house also. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. I'm just picking yeah. on you, Paul. I, I, as you guys know, uh, I understand. Um, you haven't noticed that Paul's been a very good friend of ours for uh, years, and you know we've done dinners and lunches, and and the cool thing for me is like I get to ask a lot of these questions that are from someone that's way smarter than I am, and I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. So, and 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 it really today's thing, you know, the webinar and the webinars we teach is it's a lot of mistakes that unfortunately Ryan, myself even Paul have made, and we want to pass it on to you. Um, you're still going to make your own mistakes. That's okay, right? We talked about, you know, I put Paul on the spot talking about in 2007 or eight, how he got wiped. I, I'll be, you know, to lose $10 million, I know it's just a number to an extent. I could, I would have been, have been tough to get out of bed. You know, I lost about $3 million and I, it was like, I couldn't breathe. And, and the point is like, you have to get through it. Right, like, what's your choice? My my choice is going back to corporate America, and hating my job, or 
you know, I, I kind of joke about it. That I'm just too competitive. I'm too stubborn yeah. to say you can't do this. Uh, I'm not saying those are, you know, those motivation people will probably tell you that's not the way to do it. I'm just being upfront of what happened for me. Yep. I grew up on welfare and, uh, and I just said, I'm, I'm going to work. And so anybody that says, well, I can't do this. I can't, I literally grew up on welfare. And, uh, and so to me, there are no excuses for somebody saying, oh, I can't do this. Um, absolutely none. Uh, other than fear. And yeah. I try never to let fear stop me from doing what I want to do. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, it's funny. It's like fear. You know, we could talk about that too a little bit. Everyone has it. I mean, you're not, yes. you're not special. Like you're not special. Like I'm not, <laughs> Paul's not that special. He's the only guy that's got, you know, everything on fear. We all have it. And I kind of joke about it. I always say, Hey, okay. Thanks for sharing that little inner voice. Like you can't do this. Thanks for sharing. I'm going to get up. I'm going to get through this. I yep. think that's so important, you know, and you do one or two and then you get some confidence and then it's velocity. And then before you know it, and, and, I, and I can speak from it as like my first wholesale deal, I made 2000 bucks. I was ecstatic. I was like, oh my God, I bought something. I did nothing to it. And I actually made money on it and I had no desire closing on it or didn't have the means. I'm like, this is unbelievable. Now, you know, you get checks for twenty, thirty thousand dollars and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm numb to it, but it's not a big deal. You know, now you're like, okay, we've had a couple of deals this year. I don't know if you know, Paul, like we made over a hundred on a wholesale deal. We didn't even fix it. Yes, so. I know. I, 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 in fact, I, when I saw him, I thought I was going to take your boot class. We can tell you all the secret sauce. I'm kidding. We, there's yeah. no secret in that portion. We've got to talk about it. The, there was uh, a period when I would take anybody that wanted to learn this business out to lunch and uh, I would say, listen, I'll, we'll go out to lunch. You can pick my brain for an hour and a half. All you got to do is buy lunch. And invariably I would even pick up the lunch tab. And, uh, <laughs> but rarely did I see anybody from that point on put forth the effort because they had no investment in it. Exactly. And, uh, and that's, you have to have some investment in it, time or energy or something. And, uh, yeah. But yeah, it makes sense because it's, you know, like the problem, you know, and I like watching the HD TV shows and, you know, with social media and everything, everyone's looking to get rich quick and it drives me insane. You're still building a business. So, you know, how many of businesses, you know, can you buy one property or be in a deal and three or four months later, you made a big chunk of money, you know, and yep. you're talking 30, 40,000 bucks. Listen, that's a year's salary, you know, for a lot of people or, you know, it, it or it, it, it adds up is my point. So saying all that, right. You've probably seen a lot of people, you know, get in this business. We, we get calls, I'd say three to five times a month of people getting themselves in bad deals, right. They watch the HDTV show. Yep. It's very easy. I bought a lean and they bought the, you know, the HOA lean versus, you know, the actual. Oh, yeah. So, yep. so we get all those too. So. Yep. And, and I'll, I'll put in a plug for you guys and, uh, but it's not a plug. You guys know what you're doing. I, uh, I know a lot of the, I like to think I know everybody in this industry and, uh, and you guys know what you're doing as far as you teaching know, others. Hey, Paul, can you, can you tell my wife that? <laughs> <laughs> That's totally different situation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, because I, I, I don't think I don't know. Like sometimes, uh, you know, I don't think she agrees, but I'm only yeah. I know. My my wife watching. used to say, if I had money in the bank, if I had, she would look at it and say, "Oh, good, we got a lot of money in the bank." I said, "Yeah, that's no good." But when we had no money in the bank, I used to be happy. I would say, "Oh, honey, we're doing great," and yeah. uh, because money in the bank is earning you nothing, and uh, and but she never quite understood that it. Uh, how can you say we're doing good? We have no money. Yeah, because our money's out there earning money. And, uh, Absolutely. Yeah. So, so w let's go back to some of these questions. So uh, let's see, Anonymous, do you review, do, uh, one more time, do you review the deal for soundness before committing to providing the funding? In other words, do you also act as a second set of eyes if this is a good deal or not? 
I think we kind of touched on that, but yeah, of course, because I'm not going to loan on a bad deal because then I'm going to be stuck owning a piece of property that uh, I don't want to own. Yep. Remember, my yeah. my uh, collateral is that bad deal, and uh, I don't want. But more importantly, I don't want a bad deal for you to be in because then I will never have you as a customer again. If we do a good deal together, you're going to like yeah. this industry. I may get 10 deals out of you in the next three years. And uh, so, no, I want you to have a good deal, make money, call me up, say, Paul, I made 40000 on that deal. Thank you so much. Can I do another one? And uh, yes. So, yes, I analyze the deal. I have okay, to. Just Yep, Jess is asking, can you share some information how to best present your loan request to a lender? What's the most important to you when we're doing a loan request? And there's a lot of factors. If you had to pick one. A lot of factors. Um, I had a guy present me a package with the repair costs itemized, everything itemized, comparables. And I looked at it and I said, you did all this work? You got, and he said, yes. And when I went to give him the, the loan, I gave him a very good LTV because I knew he was organized. I knew that he was going to get this job done. That, 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 if you come to me and you say, I have a house, here's the address. I want to pay 100000 for it. I think it needs 50000 more of the work. I think you haven't done your due diligence. So present it to me with, uh, I have this house. I want to buy it. This is what's wrong with it. This is what I need to fix it. This is what I think I can sell it for when I'm done. And uh, so that I know you've put some effort into it. Um, I have people that send me an address, say, how much will you lend on this house? And you know, I, I don't even reply. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it, it's funny, I get the same thing. Uh, I don't get the lend, it's like, what do you think of this house? I'm like, uh, who are you? What do you yeah, mean? exactly. I mean, um, you got to put some work into it, guys. I mean, we're not mind readers. And the, the thing is, like, also time. You know, Paul has a lot of good clients, and there's only so much time in the day. And if you know Paul well enough, you, you know, he golfs. So I know he'll golf in the morning, get a couple couple of rounds <laughs> in uh, in the morning. So I know what time he golfs. I try to get, you know, those important questions. You know, I try to negotiate it when he's on the, on the golf course because I might get better. Yeah, you know? it all depends on how I'm doing, actually. But, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, uh, so, but so, Mark, yeah. Tells, I think you kind of actually answer this. But do you lend money for projects in the whole state of Florida, or only local projects, state or Broward? I lend so, money anywhere. It's it's anywhere that I can get a safer ret anywhere I can get a return that's comparable to my risk. Yeah, absolutely. And and so some of the other things, Ileana. We kind of touched on this also. What are the other requirements needed? Credit score, um, experience will, will help, right? Um, if you have assets, right? I mean, I think you'd look at someone different if you had two or 300,000 in the bank. Yeah, Maybe. I look at them a lot different. I, uh, but yes, the first thing I look at is the property. And after the property, other things, are mitigating factors that determine the terms of the loan. But the first thing I look at is the property. If you have the property, you have assets, um, you have credit, uh, obviously my risk is less and therefore the terms of the loan are better for you. Absolutely. Uh, risk and reward have a, have a relationship. The higher the risk I have to take, the bigger reward I want. It makes sense. I mean, that's the way the world works, right? Yep. The other thing Natalia is asking, would, would you lend in Puerto Rico? No. That's somewhere that you No? No. Nothing that's against right. Puerto Rico, but no. no. Yep. Uh, usually, in, in to, and we kind of touched on this too. I know some of these questions are, um, we've already kind of answered. So one of the questions I'm getting, again, down payment. Again, it depends on your experience level, but ideal, ideally 20% down. I'm just going to do that as a rule of thumb, extenuating circumstances for, you know, experience or, you know, track record with Paul. Yes, and, and actually that 20% down goes either way. It can go to 70%, it can go to 90%. It, uh, yep. So, you know, depending on, on your experience and on the, remember this, I also have to look at the ARV, 
Um, right. have to rip it uh, yeah, I, yes. I won't exceed 65% of the ARV in most cases. Okay. Uh, now, when I'm doing refis, I, I will exceed that. You know, I'll go, I can go up to 80% on a refi if everything else makes sense. Yeah. And, and when we're talking about making sense, we're talking cash flow, right? Yes. The idea is, the idea is that Paul needs to get paid, and not just Paul, but every lender. If they're lending you money and there's no cash flow, that might be a little bit different. Correct. It's, right. Debt service ratio is an important thing. Yeah, and, and that's is between the taxes and insurance and the mortgage payment and uh, contingencies. Is there enough money to pay the, the loan? Let's see. He's asking, are you, a, is Paul a national home lender or a regional to Florida? So you said you could lend in others. You have partners that you can lend in other states? Yeah, actually, somebody just called me on a $5 million house in California. Can I put the loan together? And uh, I said, you know, if it was in Florida, for sure I could. I have to check and see if I can do it in California. Okay. Um, can, can a hard money lender lend for online purchases at a foreclosures auction? No, because at a foreclosure auction, you don't have the title. Right. You don't have, I have to have clear title. And you don't have the title at the time that you have to pay for it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Joseph. Now, now, let me throw a caveat in there. There are guys that buy foreclosure auctions that I lend money to because they've done 50, 75 deals. And I know that they're going to make it work. They know what they're doing. Absolutely. Guys, if you don't mind, put your questions in the Q&A, not in the chat, please. It's a little too hard for me to keep track of it. Um, do you provide proof of funds, Joseph is asking? Yes. Yes, you do. But you've got to use them. So I'm going to just add to that. It's going to drive me nuts because do not call Paul just for proof of funds and have no intention of using them. It's kind of a... I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I don't know the word I'm going to use, but it, it's kind of you know you got to value his time too. Or at least have have the good faith that let him look at the loan first. How about that? I, that yeah, that's, that's yes. What I would say because I don't want yep. them to just call you for. But but, hey, but let me take it a step further. I'll provide yeah. you a proof of funds letter, even if it's a. It takes me a few minutes, but we've begun a relationship. Maybe you go borrow from somebody else, but you remember my name. And uh, I appreciate it if you use me, but uh, I'll provide, yeah. I provide proof of funds letters to people I never hear from again. No, and, exactly. It just, and, uh, like what we're asking is just common sense. Yeah, like yeah you wouldn't exactly. Want to do it way. Like, you know, we, like, we appreciate Paul's time or what, what I don't like, and this happens to us, I don't say don't like, but it's a little frustrating is they're gonna bend your ear, ask all these questions, and then they're gonna go to someone else for the lending. Correct. At least else. give me a I chance at it. At least give me a chance. Yeah, let, I feel like yeah. Marco Rubio every time I take a sip of water. <laughs> um, let's see, Philip, we did uh, a answer this question. Does Paul do loans on new construction and single family residential? Yes. Yes. Um, they're asking about mo mobile homes. I saw a question there. No. About mobile home. No. Nope. Okay. Nope. nope. That was pretty easy. Um, wow. Let's see. We're still moving through these. Let's see. Sharon's asking, what if you're purchasing a property intended for a rental? How is that paid back and how long is the loan for? So let's not say you're going to fix it up just a flat rental property. Do you do those kind of loans? Yes, I do. But, and, but what I'll do on that is I'll structure it. I'll take it to a, a hedge fund. And, uh, and what I'll do on that is I'll take it to a hedge fund, work out the best deal for you and make a point. And, uh, <clears throat> so the answer is yes. Okay. Is that your phone? Is that, are you ringing? Yeah, hold on. I'll stop it though. I have another. <laughs> hey, don't call. Don't call Paul right now. You're alone. Give us. A, we have 20 more minutes before you call him. <laughs> so, so let's see. Again, we kind of touched on some of these questions. I'm just going to kind of uh, say them out loud. Generally speaking, we want 20% down of your own money. If yes. you own the property being clear and there's 20 percent equity on a refinance you actually don't need any money the, the equity in the house will cover the 20 percent or 25 whatever you're doing on the cash out refi right now the yes generally that's true 
I need to see though a debt service coverage. Um, so, so there are factors in that because I, it's what's called a non-QM mortgage. I take it to a hedge fund. And so mm -hmm. they have parameters that I have to fit. But yes, I can normally get you 80% on it. At times and again, again, this is just general stuff today is like, I, you know, don't, you know, I know we have this recorded and they'll say, hey, Paul, you told me I could get this. No, it depends on the appraised value. There's a lot of moving factors too. Again, we're giving you general guidelines so you have an idea when you're doing stuff. Uh, right. One of our coaches, Lucian, says, ask, asking, how much does the person's credit score have an impact on your decision to land? I guess one to ten. <laughs> Say that again. So, so their, their credit score, Right. What, how much impact does it uh, have on your decision to land? If, if you had to say one out of 10, right? 10 being the most important, what do you think about like their credit score? Uh, it makes, it doesn't make a big difference unless it's 790 or 580. And uh, if it's, if it's very high, it makes a difference. If it's very low, it makes a difference. If it's in the middle, I just want to see that you're, you know, that you borrowed and paid that you, you know, so yeah, if it's, if it's very high or very low, it makes a difference. But other than that, it doesn't make that big a difference. Okay. Uh, great questions. Are you, can you put a loan together in, in Connecticut? Yes. There you go. I'm That's doing, great. as I said, I'm doing those two houses in Alabama so that he can buy a third one in Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> How's um, that deal going? <clears throat> it's going good. It's going good. It's working out. Yeah, it's going. Okay. It's getting there. All right. Um, so Jackie's asking, how do you check someone's credit? Is it a soft pull or is it a hard pull? It depends. Um, it depends. Jackie, how's your credit? Yeah. So you can put it in. The, and actually, just so you guys know, we put Paul's information in the chat earlier, or it's also on our Bria homepage. So you, I know these guys are going to have some specific questions right. uh, on the scenario. Uh, Jackie's saying it's good, by the way. Um, okay. How good? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 you know, mine was mine was good compared to you know, when I had bankruptcy and I got up to you know six hundred. I was like, yeah, it's good now. Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah, I and I often get people saying, "Oh yeah, my credit's improved." I said, "What is it now?" They say six twenty. Yeah. I said, "What the hell was it before it improved?" But Okay, let's see yeah. um wow some of these are but, really but, but i never answered her question um oh yeah Sorry. Uh, i'll do a soft pull first uh, i may ask you then if i may have a question i may ask you to pull a tri merge and i'll look at it and then again it depends on what we're going to do with the loan how big it is whether i pull hard pull but uh i never okay. pull a hard pull without discussing it with you first Perfect. And, and, and if Jackie, I pull a hard pull, there's a reason. Good. And, and Jacqueline's saying she's in the 800. So good for you. Working on that credit. Good job. Um, so let's see. Anonymous. My concern is that you can't get a property under contract without proof with proof of funds. Is there a way to get qualified first? So I guess. Yeah, I where, guess where, they, that's where the proof of funds is. My proof yeah. of funds letter, in essence, says that I will lend you X number of dollars on that piece of property. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, 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 laugh, I'm, laugh, I'm laughing at this next question because it makes me laugh. And of course, they're anonymous, so they don't want to put their name out there. Hey, will Paul provide? Grand, is it? No. Yeah, it's a, it, it, will Paul provide an earnest money deposit? <laughs> will I provide an earnest money deposit? Yeah, I'm laughing. You got to put your own deposit in. Come on, guys. Yeah, no, I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, James is also asked, uh, actually, Kazar is asking, how long does it take to be approved for a loan? It depends on... Uh, how fast you get the information is number one. Yeah, it right? depends on the loan. There are, there are guys that call me up and say, I want to buy this house. And I said, you know, you're already approved. Um so it depends on a if we've done business before, uh, you know, yeah, not I mean, long. Not, yeah, I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you right off the bat whether the loan's a good loan or not. Um, right. As I say, here's what I say to the borrower: 
if what you tell me is the truth, what I tell you is also the truth. Because often I get a borrower telling me something that doesn't turn out to be accurate. And then I say, I'm no longer held to what I told you. And uh, so, and it, yeah, it, I can improve it. it. Is, it's fun because and, like, you know, my background, I, I used to do financing and I'm still licensed as a mortgage guy. And, and the I always tell everyone the same thing is like, if you're gonna go for financing, right? If you're gonna go through Paul financing, tell them everything, please. It's gonna be easier, right? Exactly. Like if there's a, if there's a and you know what's why no one's actually even asked me this, which I'm surprised is, what about, what's your idea about liens, city liens? Like, let's say there's a lien for $40,000 city of Fall Lauderdale. Will you lend on it? Or what's the workaround or? Okay, there again, it depends. Um, because it depends on what the lien is for. Uh, if it's for a, a code violation, I may escrow that because I know that that forty thousand could become five hundred. Um, so mm -hmm. it depends on depends on a number of things: what the violation is, what the lien is for. Um, you know, there's workarounds on some of them, and some of them are just not doable. Um, depends right. on the city. Depends on what the violation is. It uh, depends on a number of things. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I'm seeing but, a lot of this. But here, I'll, I'll tell you this, that if you have a deal with uh, liens, call a niche and Ryan, because <laughs> that's what they're experts at. I mean, yeah. how many times have you guys worked out liens? A bunch. We actually More like those properties. More than a bunch. Pardon yeah. me? Yeah. I said, we actually like those properties, not because yeah, of exactly. Liens. No and, one wants uh, to deal with it. And, and for our students, the good thing is it's our own money. So I yeah. like, like same situation as you is that since we put up a hundred percent of the money for the deals for the students, I'm going to go check it out. Right. Like I want to make sure, and I don't mind going above and beyond, you know, I, I was kind of joking about Ryan and I, we'd like to think we're good guys, but you put a monetary thing of like, Hey, we might make 40, 50,000 bucks. You don't think, you know, Ryan went to, um, with Viola Perez to the magistrate. And they, they got a lien in North Miami down from 165,000 uh, bucks to less than 6,800 bucks. And we made $57,000. Yep. The point of that story is that Ryan went there because we're in the deal, right? If, if you're not in the deal and it's a different end of it, you know, and I would say, hey, Paul, you know what? You know, you could probably negotiate that. And if you're here, exactly. hang, up, hang up the phone and say, what the heck do I do, right? And that's yep. one of the things really different from anybody else out there too so um let's see we have a lot more questions guys some of the questions i'm getting we kind of answered them earlier um what i'm also going to do now is if you if you're going to ask anonymous questions i probably won't get to you because of the people that uh at least put their name in there so would you refinance a homestead property to get oh. equity to come either side no right so Guys, got to be investment properties. You cannot live in it. Correct. Frank Dodd and all the other legal stuff out there. It, it's a lot harder just yep. so that um, to foreclose and there's a lot of different laws out there. So oh, I don't know any hard money lender that actually does owner occupied. No, none. None. I, there's not yeah. a single one. Yep. Uh, uh, Kenton's asking, can hard money financing be used with short sales? And yes. Yes. But you remember, you still need to come up with your own money, too, because you know he's not going to put up a hundred percent if you're now. Like that's correct. You know, again, we're using we're using the general um, guidelines, is what I would say when we're talking about this. I know there's situations that are different, but you know we don't want to go into uh, that kind of stuff. I know some of you guys are asking us, you know, uh, best location for deals. You know, I mean, we use Reifax. Actually, we have a seminar coming up with Reifax next week, the software we use. Um, so we'll put that in the chat. Make sure you sign up for that too. But you can buy it on our wholesale list too if you're not signed up for that. Um, it depends what you're doing. I don't know. You know what I mean? And obviously we have our own coaching program where, where we teach you how to find off-market deals. So uh, a lot of different ways. I mean, the numbers are pretty big. Actually, let's, let's talk about how much did you lend out this past month or the last, like, because you know what I get is like, oh, it's COVID, right? We, we keep pushing. We're still doing deals during COVID, right? And I don't right. want to be the only person 
saying that, saying, hey, Nish, you know, Ryan, you guys keep saying that. What are you seeing on the lending side during COVID? Because we haven't even touched on that. Like, uh, February well, should be February should be the biggest month I've ever had. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So if you haven't been doing deals, right, you can't find deals. Listen to a guy that actually is dying to lend money. He's talking about the biggest month yeah. ever. And yep. it's only 28 days. You got gypped yep. in a couple of days and you're saying yep. it's the biggest month. Wow. Yeah. It's, uh, that's, it'll be the biggest month for closing. And these are deals that maybe I started in January. And, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, you know what? Business is booming right now. Business is booming. Yeah. Anytime there's movement in the market, business is good. And now there's movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Liz Annette's asking, how long does it, well, we kind of talked about the approval closing process. Is it better from a timing perspe perspective? to have a line of credit ready available or waiting to have a deal and, and request a loan. So I, what I, like if she has a line of credit, right, then and I'm just gonna kind of go by that and, and she could close on it. She could and refi it with his option one. If she's gonna rehab it, I would do it directly with, you know, I wouldn't even use my line of credit or just for the down payment. Yeah, when so, she says line of credit, does she mean a line of credit on an existing property? Or is she meaning, because there's a lender out there that says, I'll give out a $5 million line of credit. Mm -hmm. But they don't give out a $5 million. That's, that's the maximum amount that they'll give you. They still vet each and every deal according to the parameters of the, the loan. So there is no such thing as a, a line of credit that you can access without each individual deal being approved. Um, I so... Like yeah. I mean, if I know a little bit about you ahead of time, I can tell you, yeah, this, you know, go out and find a house. Um, but remember this, 80% of the deal is the property. 20% of the deal is who you are. That's a pretty good, yeah, that's some really good advice. Um, and so now it's so funny, these 90 minutes go so quick. You know, we've, we've already like it's almost 12 30 so wow first you know, and if you remember i was worried about doing 15 minutes <laughs> and and it's funny so i literally have and and i first i'm going to apologize to all the questions i don't get to i have a ton some of them we've answered we've probably have about 20 i'm trying to answer as many as i can um again you know we'll put paul's information uh in the chat and you can email them on your specific scenarios uh situations also um Let's see, we have a few more minutes coming up too. So a couple of quick announcements before we, we get some parting words from Paul also, uh, is we do have our monthly meeting tomorrow. So Jean Garino uh, is gonna talk about assisted living facilities. Actually, I got a question for you because I, I actually saw Jean about two weeks ago in Phoenix and those guys are killing it because they're building more assisted living facilities. I know it's a business. And, and I know he converts single family homes. Obviously you gotta make sure the city and all that other good stuff. Is that something you could convert from a longer term funding? Let's say I found a house. It's my eight, two in Hialeah, which I'm gonna keep as an eight, two, right? Uh, that's 1200 <laughs> square feet. And I'm gonna make it a, no, an assisted living facility. Let's just, you let's use that and I rehab it. Right. Would you go by, in, and it's funny because I haven't gotten this question either, which is kind of funny. Would you go by the cash flow on the refinance after a year? Like, let's say of actually running, or, or can I just refinance it on pro forma, which I know no one could stand. No. Um, so no one pro forma, right? That means correct the potential is. What would you do? Would you uh, like on an assisted living? But I know it's totally outside the box, so I have no idea. What? No, yeah, that. but no, but you know what? I do. Uh, I just did a twenty-four unit down in Homestead. There are 200 okay. square feet per unit, 220 square feet per unit. I got a rent roll. And okay. I said, you know what? This is, uh, so then I, I do it based on the debt service. The income is phenomenal. Um, it's also okay. a repeat customer. And so, uh, you know, I, I put it as part of a portfolio. And yes, it, uh, yep, it appraised it based on debt service. It's funny because like everyone's at, like, these are my questions too, by the way. So the other one I get 
Um, I know with COVID, it's a little bit challenging, but how about Airbnb? If I had rent rules for two years, do you have any lenders or anyone that you partner with? Because I know you have a lot. Like, no, it's not you. No, not, no longer Airbnb, no longer hotels. Um, okay. Anything dependent on tourism? No. Okay. For now. So here, here's the thing. For now, say, yes. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> yep. it, it's no for now is what we're saying. So remember, Correct. like, you know, when we're talking about things, we're talking about the market this minute. You know, what's yep. happening? Um, what about in, I, you were laughing, not laughing, but I remember in March, right? When right. COVID first happened and you said, oh my God, everything shut down, meaning the lending. You kind of want yep. to talk about the change of what you've well, seen. The world you know, panicked, everybody panicked. And uh, because nobody, yeah. And actually it shut down, but it shut down based on no real information. It shut down based on panic. And uh, and so it quickly reopened, but yeah, for two months it just uh, yeah, it shut down. Everything shut down. Um, yeah. But now Absolutely. it's back. Now there's more more deals, more money available than ever. You know, money. What, is, what about like I know you travel and you've seen yeah you know, because people always always picking different markets like to chase after deals and through National Ria. We know different RIA owners. And when I tell them the numbers that we get, they almost have a heart attack. And, and one of the funny things that I get from these guys is, and, and down here, when you talk to people, especially newbies, there's too much competition. You know, if I had a dollar for every time I heard too much competition. And then when I hear the, um, the guys from other areas or regions, they literally right. laugh. They, it's so easy down there and you have some massive numbers. What do you think about specifically about the South Florida market? I know you're in different markets a little bit throughout Florida. Right. But what, what's your take on what you're seeing and what you're feeling? And let, let me answer it differently. The people okay. that say there's too much competition. I always say, and I raise my children, the words I can't mean I'm not willing to put forth the effort. There are people that are doing two and three deals a month. Now, it's in the, they're in the exact same market as the people that are saying there are no deals out there. And so it's not a question of there's no deals out there. It's a question of they're not willing to put forth the effort to make the deals. And, uh, so yeah, the South Florida market is, is very vibrant right now. There's all kinds of deals being made. Absolutely. I mean, whether, yeah. I mean, I see all the, you know, the, I don't know if you're catching on the news, like a lot of Silicon Valley people are moving down here and yeah. they got a lot of money coming down here in South Florida. And, you know, some of the things we don't even really talk about is like, you talk about different economies in, you know, South America or Europe and they want to get, just get their money out or uh, South America, this reminds them of their own home country. The weather's great, the no income tax. So there's, you know, there's a whole, bunch of reasons to be in real estate is what I is what I tell everyone um, yeah. I did put a poll up there obviously you guys know you've been following Ron and I we have a coaching program where we put up 100% of the money for the deals and you know if you put your information and in, we'll have someone in our office give you a call and what we do is like even in, in our program and we, we talk about that is you know we go 50 50 on the profits but our goal is for you to become your your own investor and Paul kind of talked about that earlier because of our training he, you know, he even tries to market some of our, our senior uh, uh, students because they know what they're doing. Um, yeah. So, so I'm not going to put them out. I'm not going to put you on the spot and say they get favorable, you know, interest rates or loan to values. But, you know, if there's a track record and that's our goal and, you know, some of our students, I even tell them the same thing. I said, stop going 50-50 with me. Borrow the money from Ball. You know, use it. And I tell them the same thing. <laughs> and, uh, yep. And uh, yeah. Yeah, you have successful students that uh, are doing very well in this business. Yeah, we're we're excited, and like we're just as I said, we're just adding some more stuff of what we're doing now, which we'll uh, we'll let you know also of with uh, additional coaches on our team, uh, including Mr. Harry Diamond and Denise Lu and Lucian Rays who are on this call, and Taryn Ward. So we've added you know senior coaches um, on our team to give you even more insight 
I'm doing different deals too. So I know we've gone over on time. Um, so if you guys don't mind uh, giving a thumbs up or a heck yeah for Paul actually being on our webinar today. Um, again, we've negotiated 900 bucks on your first three deals of lender credit. And as Paul said, don't tell them until you actually decide on the terms, right? So you don't feel like he's thinking, you know, sinking them in. What yep. you're really going to find about Paul is that, you know, he's always thinking about the long term, you know, with his bars. And it's truly a relationship business. And, and I could always say that. And, and whether you're doing deals with him or not, like in the beginning, um, I still call him and ask him his advice on deals because we have that relationship. He's, he's one of those people that, you know, does he really need to do any of this stuff? Absolutely not, right? Um, he can only play golf for so long per day, I guess, right? Um, with the travel restrictions, I know, you know, Paul travels around the world. Um, so a little bit, you know, time on the travel. But maybe that's why you're doing more deals now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you know what? It's cool. funny. That, that does have an impact on it. I haven't left yeah. the country. I didn't leave the country in, 20, in 2020. Yeah, that, that's a long time. Yeah. That's the longest. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, uh, right. Yeah. So uh, again, like, yeah, we're super excited. Um, hopefully, uh, and you guys could always message me or email me and, and it, hopefully you found some benefit in what, you know, these webinars that we've been doing. Uh, we have upcoming webinars that our assistant uh, or manager, I should say, Alexa has been putting uh, tomorrow, Gene Garino, tomorrow night at seven. Uh, next week, we have Reifax doing one. Uh, also, we have our member benefits. I did put a poll up there. If you're not a member of Bria or Miami Dade Bria, I'm going to find where you live and chase no, yeah. <laughs> you down. No, but the, the point is that there's a lot of benefits out there. We're probably one of the uh, best priced RIAs in the national RIA market um, on pricing. So there's discounts at Home Depot, Office Depot, the landlords rent perfect. If you're not using your self-directed IRA um, to make some tax-free money, I'm going to chase after you too. Um, so we have a lot of events that Ryan and I are committed to in your learning. So... Uh, if you want to become a member of our organization, it should be almost free if you're actually using the benefits too. So um, again, Paul, thank you so much. Uh, if you want Paul back, make sure you email me. Maybe we'll have him come back in April or or so, um, you know, to, to do another topic. And and again, you know, if, if, if you email me or let us know in general, I'll ask for a Google review. If you like these webinars more than the PowerPoint stuff, or I don't know, I don't want to say PowerPoint stuff, but versus reading the screen, um, let us know. We're, we're trying to some new different concepts of, you know, just kind of chatting a little bit um, and really getting some insight, right? Like, I mean, we, we kind of covered everything a little bit on this, on this webinar. So um, any last words you want to tell the newbies, the experienced people, like some final thoughts of what, you know, what what they should do or be successful or anything that those that uh, put forth the effort are successful in this business. I've been I've been doing this for two hundred years, and uh, actually it'll be forty years this year. And uh, wow. yeah, wow. what that means is I'm. <laughs> I dye my hair. For those of you who wonder how, I spent six bucks a month dyeing this hair. And, uh, it, uh, oh yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah. I think you should go yeah, bald. Too. <laughs> um, I've been doing this for 40 years. I have rarely seen a person that puts forth the effort not be successful. Um, if they put forth the effort in this business, they've made money. And, uh, and I've seen some make millions of dollars in this business and yeah. uh yeah if they put and forth I, the I, effort I, the only thing i would add on that too is is uh it's okay if if and you've heard paul's story he lost you know some of you older timer old timers that lost money in 2007 eight like me and or ryan and i you just heard paul talk about 10 million dollars that he lost yeah you know, or but let me tell you this you know how i got the 10 million dollars Oh. I got it in this business. <laughs> yes, I got it in this business. And, you know, I was 
taking some pretty big risks and uh, I got caught in bank foreclosures, but it, uh, I started off with credit cards and an HFC loan. And uh, so those that say, well, I, I can't do it. I don't have this. No, I, I don't buy, I can't. Um, yeah. It, uh, I got it in this business. So it's, uh, it's available. Yep. And, yep. and I'll just remind everyone that Ryan and I are also cash buyers. You get something under contract, you know, give us a call. We might buy the, uh, the house from you, or we might go through our partnership program where you can still make some money. So um, just get out there and, you know, be safe. And I want to thank everyone for attending today's webinar. Um, probably take a break from your J-O-B if you're working from home. Um, in the background, you know, spending some time with Paul and myself. And hopefully we'll see you guys tomorrow night at seven with Gene Garino. And uh, I'll also be sending out a, a, a Google review. So hopefully you'll give us five stars and let us know what you liked about Paul, um, what you didn't like about Paul. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> keep that very short. <laughs> yeah, keep it very short. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but thank you, Paul. And we hope to actually see you in person pretty soon too. So thanks again. Thanks for everyone watching today and, and we'll have a replay on this on our YouTube channel. So Thank you. I'm assuming that uh, Harry and Karen are online. Yeah. So let me, let me say hello to both of them. I, uh, yep. And, and okay. I'm sure I know others online, but them in particular. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, Paul. Thank you so much. Thank Take you care, guys. You got it. Bye. Bye.